What's up YouTube? It's JB Tech Fanatic and I'm back again with another video. As always, I want to start this video by thanking each and every one of you for joining me today. I am absolutely honored that you took your time to click on this video. I would be absolutely, absolutely honored if you would consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up if you like this video. And if you want to know when the latest content is available, be sure to click the notification icon so that you know when the latest videos drop. So if you missed my first video on the all new Bose 700, be sure to watch that. In that video, I do the unboxing, I cover the comparison between the SoundTouch 300 and the 700, and pretty much answer any and all questions you need to know if you're considering upgrading from the 300 or if you want to know if this is the system that you should choose to purchase. Now, we are going to continue on in my series with part two, which is going to be set up. I'm going to start with showing you how to wire each product. Then we are going to go through the app setup. We're going to go through the settings. And what I am featuring it with today is the Samsung 2018 Q9 QLED TV. Now, of course, I'm going to show you the settings on the TV. This should work with any QLED TV, actually any Samsung TV really within the last two years that has ARC support. Now, if you have a different manufacturer TV, this video will still cover all the questions as far as setup goes. The setup will actually be exactly the same and we will cover it in as much detail as I can with the time that I'm given. If you have any other questions at this, you know, after this video, be sure to reach out to me. I do this for you guys. So hit me up in the comments section. I try to answer everyone with, if I have the information or if I don't, I try to find it for you. I'm so happy that you're here today. Let's get started. And we're going to start with how to wire everything. It's very quickly. First thing you want to do is you want to get your HDMI cable. You're going to find the HDMI port. Of course, it's labeled ARC. Plug your HDMI cord in. And then the other side of the HDMI, remember, it only goes into an ARC supported HDMI port on whatever TV you're using. Look for the ARC symbol and then plug it in. Then we have the optical cable. Now, if you don't have an ARC support on your TV, you can use optical. Um, or if you want to do both, you can. This is very simply done. Simply pull these little tabs off here, find the optical in, and go ahead and plug it in. All right, next we have the power cable, of course. Can't use it without power. Simply plug that in here. And then if you do not have Wi-Fi in your house and you want to use uh, Ethernet, go ahead and do that now. The Ethernet cable is going to plug right here. I'm not going to need it, but it does not come with one of these, so you'll have to get one. Next, I always recommend plugging this in before you go and put this behind your cabinet or whatever you're doing. The um, Adapt IQ actually gets plugged into the back. This is the headset, of course. So go ahead and plug it into the little port here. You'll see it. It says Adapt IQ, just plug it in. Now you're all set as far as the sound bar goes. You've got your HDMI, your optical, uh, your power cable, and then your Adapt IQ all ready to go. As far as the base module goes, very, very simple. Go ahead and put your power cable here, and then you're all set on this. Unless you want to hardwire it in, then in this case, you would put the base in wire right there. Okay, so you got your surround speakers. Basically, you got your speaker there. Next, you got your power box. You're simply gonna plug the power cable into the power box. On the other side, there's a few things that you wanna pay close attention to here, and that is the left and right switch that you see right here. If you mess that up, you know, it's gonna throw off your sound, so make sure if you have it on right that you have it on the right side of your room, and then, of course, the left to the left side. And then from there, it's pretty simple, straightforward plug-in. As you can see, you got this plug here. It's kind of a weird looking plug, but it just plugs and snaps right in, just like that. Now, 
The last thing that you need to do is you got to put in a little piece. Now again, everything that's needed comes in the package with your surround speakers. But as you can see, I have a red screw and then just a normal silver screw. So the red goes to red and then the black goes to silver. Um, if you guys can see these little plugs, they simply plug in. I'm really not sure why Bose just didn't have this already done for you. But anyway, you would just push those in then take your screwdriver and tighten it down. And it's worth mentioning, you wanna make sure that these are nice and tight because this obviously is how your sound is gonna go in the speaker. But once that's all done, as you can see, it's got two little pins in there. You just simply slide it all the way in. You kind of feel it click, but it does not sit flush. You will still be able to see the little screws there. And then you got your speaker. As you can see, the line is not the thick um, power cable. However, you do have to, you know, plug the power cable in the wall. Do that to the next speaker also. So you got to set it to, and we are done with all the wiring. Okay, so we got everything hardwired in. Let's talk about positioning. First thing you want to do before you start anything is get your speakers set up exactly where you want them. Now, I want to be very clear about this because we talked about in my last video how it doesn't have Dolby Atmos. And a lot of people love Dolby Atmos because it gives you this experience like you're in the environment. So if it's raining, it kind of feels like it's raining. If you've ever been into a Dolby Atmos theater, you realize that what happens when there's thunder or shooting or, you know, explosions, the seats rumble. So what I hope to do today is to help you set your system up, but not only that, but give you the experience that I experience. So the Bose SoundTouch 300 and the 700 are basically identical when it comes to sound. So you could actually use this format for either system. So the first thing is, is the soundbar positioning. Now, because it's harder for me to show you, you know, on a camera, I want to kind of explain everything to you guys so you understand what I'm talking about. But environment, the SoundTouch 300 or the 700 utilizes the walls around you and then the wall behind you. So putting it into an entertainment hub like this is not the ideal situation unless you could utilize just the back for the bass and then you get the rest of the speakers on the external part where they can actually use the walls and the environment around. So crucial, from the back wall, you want it from one to three feet, no more, no less. This will give you the best bass experience. Now, for those of you that are just getting the sound bar, you want to get the most bass that you can. The second thing is, is the sidewalls. Now the sidewalls, you want really no more than 15 feet, but 10 feet's better. And what I've noticed, let's just say you have a wall on this side and it's 10 feet, and then you have an open kitchen, kind of like I do in this house that goes, you know, God knows how many feet, right? But the way to fix the situation is when you use the adapt IQ process that on the last position, because I believe it's five total positions that you move to when you're listening with that on your head, you want to move to the furthest area that is, you know, to the furthest wall. You probably can't make it all the way to the wall, but go stand if you need to in your kitchen. This is going to help alleviate not having a wall to kind of ricochet that uh, sound off of. The next thing is, is the sound module base, right? The base module is best if you put it into a corner. Now, I want you to think about this. So in this room here, I got a big comfy couch and you know, like my health, it's not great. So I spend a lot of time on the couch. So basically I put it in a corner, but slightly touching the couch. Now that might not sound crazy to you, Make sure that the airport that I talked about in the first video is facing forward 
but let the actual module sit against the couch. If you do this, you're gonna be in for an amazing experience because what's gonna happen is if there's an explosion or anything in that matter, it is going to rumble your couch just like the Adobe Atmos Theater. The next thing is, is the virtual invisible speakers if you're working with the 300 or the surround speakers if you're working with the 700. You want those to be about five feet up off the ground and tilted slightly where they can hit the ceiling. So Adobe Atmos uses, you know, and basically speakers that shoot straight up and they bounce off the ceiling. What I found, if you kind of just put them at an angle, you get the same exact thing. Now, basically when you utilize the environment like that, it's really strange because you'll hear birds chirping all over the place, you'll hear the bullets flying, and it really is breathtaking. I'm telling you, this system, even without Atmos, is my number one recommendation for a soundbar 5.1 system. And I mean that wholeheartedly. If you set it up properly, you're going to be like, wow, Bose Stadium sound is the real deal. It's almost as if they were doing this way before anyone else. It's just they don't call it that. They do not have, you know, the up firing speakers yet, but again, those can come with an update. So you get your positioning done first, then plug everything in. The app is now downloaded. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to do the software updates for the system with the app. Again, make sure everything now is positioned where you wanna use it and all powered on. As you can see here, the bar is on. This is kind of that light bar that will be showing us Alexa. And what I do with this particular room, okay? Now, my upstairs room, it works way better. So I have one up there and I have really close walls that kind of veer off at a V. It really is spectacular. But anyway, I pull it out where it sits, where and all the speakers on the front are actually in the air. I mean, they could go left, right, forward, and then the bass is ricocheting off the back wall, and it's just giving me a spectacular sound. To be clear, SoundTouch 300 or 700, this will work. Now, there is two separate apps if you're gonna do that, right? You need to either use the Bose Music app for the 700 or for the 300, the SoundTouch app. They will not work together, but as I covered in the first video, as long as you sync the new surround speakers and the new 700 bass module with the new music app, you can use your old equipment with the Soundbar 700. So let's jump into the app and do the software update. Okay, so Bose Music app, everything's turned on and plugged in. We're going to go ahead and boot this up. Now you're gonna to have to create um, an account if you don't already have one. If you do, go ahead and sign in. Very quickly, before I forget, before you start all this, it might be a good idea to just you know reboot your router and modem just to give a fresh um, start. Make sure that your phone is also connected to the Wi-Fi network that your soundbar will be connected to. The next screen after you sign in is it asks for device location. I actually recommend letting it have it because as you can see, it looks for the low energy Bluetooth and it uses it to connect to your product. So it's up to you. So basically it's gonna turn on the Bluetooth on my phone. All right, it's gonna pick. Okay, so as you can see, now it shows the Bose uh, Soundbar 700. If you're over on this screen, all you have to do is swipe left and then there's your product there. And then down here at the bottom, it says add product, so go ahead and do that. So it's gonna connect.
for my protection, I'm covering it, but make sure you know um, your Wi-Fi password and the uh, SSID for your Wi-Fi. So go ahead and you would input that there along with the password. Now it just connected, as you can see, it's activating my product. So it's gonna actually sync it to your account. So now you wanna put success and then you wanna name it. So wherever you're gonna put this particular product, go ahead and pick. Go ahead and do family room here for me. Now it's naming the product. So basically this is telling you while family room is public, anyone can connect to it. So basically this is if you have company over and they wanna play music. So I shut that off. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. Got another success, so we're doing good. So here's the update. This could take quite a while, so be prepared and definitely do the update. Remember, it's going to say, you know, not available and searching until it is done doing the update. And again, it does take a little while. You know it's updating because the sound bar will be doing that for you. All right. So depending on your internet speed, that can take anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes to upload or download, sorry, the software update. Once that's complete, you are then going to have to push the SoundTouch 700 icon and it's going to connect it, and all of a sudden, it's going to take you to before you begin, and then it's gonna say place your soundbar, position your soundbar so that it's within the line of sight with all your other devices. So this is the portion that we are going to connect the sub and the surround speakers. So once that's complete, you have also your Bose remote, which is a lot different than last year. However, the key functions are the same as far as what buttons you push. So technically to add the sub, you would hold down the music icon, which will light up and then hold number seven until it starts to blink. Now with the app, it automatically said accessories. I hit the sound bar 700. It took me to accessories. I went ahead, I hit next. And now it says connect your TV. Again, we did this all in the beginning, but it's explaining the HDMI arc. Now, to be clear, I talked about it in the last video. This system is supposed to have eARC support, enhanced ARC support, which is a big deal. However, on the back, it only says ARC, but on the app and on the website, it says it's an eARC. I'm still kind of thrown off by that because I know that eARC is supposed to be labeled. But right here on the app, it shows eARC. So let's assume that it uses eARC, and that makes me happy. So it just tells you what to do. We already talked about this, arc to arc. Once that's complete, it knows it's connected, and now it says connect accessories, and would you like to add a base module or surround speakers? So because this app um, is a little bit I guess, easier than last year's. Last year, you know, we pulled out the remote, we did it all manually. It looks like it's gonna be pretty simple. So again, everything's plugged in, including your sub, and then go ahead and hit connect. Now, it will then say first place and connect your accessory speakers and power. It's telling us to do everything we, already, we have already done to this point, so forget about that and let's just get started. Now, as soon as you hit get started, it's going to search for the accessories in the room. The nice thing is, is that they're already plugged in, they're already in position, so we're ready right. to go. Pretty nice. I don't know if you can see this in the camera, but it basically shows that I own all the products, and it says that's everything, or that's all of them. So they're all check marked, and then we're gonna go ahead and hit that's all of them. Now, the important part comes and I really encourage you do not skip this. So you're going to hit get started. Again, I love that the app allows you to do it. Everything can manually be done on the remote also, but again, why not use the app? So 
we're going to hit get started. As soon as you hit get started, it's going to have you move around the room and listen to some acoustics and so on and so forth. And this is what makes bows amazing. So do it now. Nice. We already have these plugged in, right? What we're going to do is you're going to simply stick this on your head. As you can see, this wire is quite long. What you want to do is you want to go to the positions that you will be sitting or anyone will be sitting or listening to music. Remember what I said, if you have one wall that's really far, utilize that as your last position. Even if you need to stand up and you need to go walk as far as you can, be sure to do so using this. If you have a sound center like this, make sure that the sound bar is pulled out so that it can get the whole environment. And remember, if you ever move the speakers, you need to rerun this. And let's be honest, isn't this just a beautiful accessory? Maybe I should wear it around every day. No, I'm kidding. But so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And then we'll go from there really quickly. I won't make you sit through the whole process, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit get started so you guys can actually hear what it says. As soon as you hit get started, it tells you to plug this in. We already know that. But as soon as I hit that, it tells you exactly to put this on your head and then find your favorite seats as we talked about. It says I'm seated. And then when you hit I'm ready, we got one, two, three, four, five positions. So let's go ahead and just do one so you can hear it. So that's basically what it's doing to find out the best sound for you. So I'm going to go ahead and get this done and we'll go to the next step. All right. So I went to five positions. It's all completed. And now it tells me that my audio experience has been customized for my room. It also tells me that if I move anything to be sure to re do it over again. So don't forget that because I know sometimes we adjust things. After that, you simply hit OK. And now it's going to go into the remote setup. Now, I love the Samsung One remote, which again will work with this. But in order for the system to work properly and to not have as many HDMI ARC problems, which hopefully will be a thing of the past with eARC support, is for whatever reason, you still want to program the Bose remote. So it is not that hard to do. Just take a few minutes to do it. Let's go ahead and show you how to do that now. Okay, so we still have our app open. It says remote setup. We have a remote here, and then you're just gonna press set up now. Now, it says heads up, you are about to test a series of codes. Some will work, some won't, don't worry. Now this is actually very nice that it helps you do it. Last year you had to keep hitting volume up and input code. So you put in one code and then keep hitting volume up. It looks as if this is gonna help us do it automatically. Let's find out. So we'll go ahead and hit continue. Now TV brand. I got a Samsung, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type in Samsung right here. You guys can see that. So go ahead and put whatever TV you have. Now it says make sure that the device is powered on and then it's going to have you clarify that it is. Now it says we're going to turn or we're going to test the first code. Now. You're going to hit turn off now. Did it work? Yes or no. As you can see, it did not work. No try again. So I hit no try again. And we're going to continue to do this right. so until the Samsung up. TV it ended, not, ended up not picking it up. So I did it manually. So you know, the code is 00060 for Samsung. If you have a different TV and you run into this issue, you could reach out to me and I'll give you the code. Um, the next step is, is obviously this is a universal remote so you can control many things. It will take you to a screen that says set up other devices. I'm not going to do that right now, but if you would like to do that, it's very easy to do. You would just follow the same steps. Make sure that the device is powered on and that you're pointing the remote 
at the device you're gonna use. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit I'm all set. Now it says soundbar universal remote is complete and everything has been set up. So really quickly, don't forget you can do manual items, uh, meaning if you want to, you know, reprogram the soundbar or you want to rehook up anything else and you're not going to use the app in the manual, you could use the actual Bose remote to do that if you're not comfortable with phones. So that's kind of up to you. I'll leave you at that. But the next step is setting up Alexa. Now, the screen will automatically pick it up. What you're going to do is you obviously need to have an Alexa account, which is basically an Amazon account. If you don't have one, go ahead and sign up. But it is a cool feature. I recommend using it. If you're going to have this bar, why not? So basically, the next thing, it says go ahead and use Alexa. And then it says sign in with Amazon. So what you're going to do is just go ahead and hit sign in, which I could do very quickly here. Now, because it's going to give you a text message with a code, you're going to have to wait. And this is basically a two-step verification process for your safety. All right. So we signed in with Amazon. Then Amazon wanted to sign back into Bose. And now we are to the language selection, which in this case is English. Go ahead and hit continue. Now it asked if you wanted to let Bose access your voice profile and all your smart items. If you already want or already have that set up and you want to use it as a you know control for your home, you definitely need to let it have access to that. Then it asks about your music services and if you want to use those, go ahead and hit, of course, continue. And then it just says, say Alexa, to discover the devices, okay? So here are some things you can try saying. Alexa, play funk in the living room, turn up the volume, set timer for five minutes, and what's the weather? We all know this kind of thing now. It's basically your smart device. Now it's setting it all up into your speaker. Setup complete. Your new Bose product is now set up. If you need any help, come to JV Tech Fanatic. Now it says to contact support if you need them. So get started. Now I went ahead and I just synced one of my music providers up. Now I'm gonna set it up on the TV so you guys can see. Remember, if you just have a sound bar, you will not get Dolby 5.1 no matter what you do. You have to have the speakers of the surround speakers and the bass module, but it's very hard with all these new rules with um, YouTube to let you guys hear a lot. So what I'm gonna do is we'll go ahead and we'll set it up on the TV and then I'll try to find some, maybe some gun scenes. I won't really let you be able to see too much visual, um, but I'll try to play whatever I can for short as possible so you can kind of get an idea of how amazing it's. All right, so, so many people ask me about the sound profile that I use. And I want to clarify a few things because this actually has a lot more adjustments in it. Now, I think originally at launch, it didn't have all the tweaks that you could do with bass, so on and so forth. But the way you get there is you want to go back to the music app. Why don't you just go ahead and back all the way out? Go ahead and press the music app. Once you're in the music app, you're going to see it looks just like this. And hopefully you could see this. If not, maybe I can put some screenshots up, but you'll see that your bar, your sound bar is down here in the corner. Go ahead and press that sound bar. And then you're going to see that it's going to give you some settings here. And there's a few options. So go ahead and hit adjustments. Now the adjustments, and again, hopefully this is focusing in, focusing in, sorry. The adjustments are going to give you bass, treble, center channel level, and then rear surround speakers. So my recommendation with the bass is 100. I like it to just thunder. Trouble, I set it to 60, okay? Now again, guys, these are my preferences. This does not mean you have to do that. But remember, they give you up to 100. Now the center channel, I actually put that on 20. If you want, they also have dialogue mode. So if it's nighttime and you just care about vocal or voice, just turn dialogue mode on and that's really gonna help you be able to hear 
better as far as just voice goes. And then the rear surround speakers, I turn them all the way up. Now, the reason why I turn them all the way up, and I talked about this in my first video, is one with music, it cranks. So you have it just completely surrounding you, just cranking, which is awesome. The other reason why is that it just gives it more, you know, of the ability to really hear those birds chirping or those bullets flying. Again, my opinion. So these are my settings. A lot of people asked if the center channel is there. It is there. There they are. That's how you get them. You just basically would just press that sound bar. Again, you would go to adjustments and you are ready to rock. Now there is also settings. Settings is just for the accessories. Again, you could go back into pair a new remote and then redo the adapt IQ. But one thing that I also want to do in settings to show you is one power sync will make the bar turn on when your TV turns on. I recommend doing that if this is going to be your sound that you're using at all times. In addition to that, advanced CEC needs to be turned on. This is actually going to allow your TV and the bar to communicate with each other. Okay. In addition to it being on in here, you also need to make sure that it's on in your TV. So you would hit the menu on the QLED, go to settings, go down to general. You're going to go to external device manager, and you're going to make sure that this is turned on. If it's green, you know it's on and you're all set, ready to go. So let's check out the other settings in the QLED TV that you need to make sure everything's working properly. All right, so we got the Samsung 2018 Q9 QLED and the one remote. Very first thing you got to do is I recommend at home, I can't really do it here because of copyrights, but put in a 4K Blu-ray if possible or something that supports 5.1 Dolby Digital Surround Sound. Put the movie on and actually let it play. Keep in mind a couple things. You cannot get Dolby Digital 5.1 unless it's being output. Most cable or you know if you're just watching regular TV or sports are not in Dolby 5.1. So so many people try to turn it on and they're like it's blacked out. Well, it's blacked out because it's not being output. If everything is connected and you did everything that we just did correctly, it will output it and it should automatically go to it. On your one remote, go ahead and hit the menu button. I want you to pay attention to a few things here. First, here is where you pick HDMI art. As soon as you click it on, as you can see, the volume turns on. Now, when I hit down, you see that it's doing the receiver HDMI. If you do not have ARC support, it will be the same difference for the optical. The optical will then turn up and down. So let's go ahead and we'll keep it on HDMI. Now, once this is turned on, we can go ahead and go to settings. As soon as you go to settings, drop down to sound. Now, as you can see on the screen, receiver HDMI, this is what we want. Now you want to drop down to expert settings. Okay. I have found, now this was with last year's model with the eARC, maybe it's going to be less problems, but I used to use bit streams, but certain formats were broken or they weren't working or you'd get choppy or cut out sound but it's up to you to what you choose. But for now, let's just say we use PCM. Now, digital output PCM, I want you to pay attention to two things here. So many people ask me about this with the QLED TV. Dolby Digital Plus is only available with Samsung to Samsung product, meaning Samsung TV that supports it like the Q9 or QLED series, and then one of their sound bars. You will not get Dolby Digital Plus with any other sound bars, unfortunately. Now, does it make that big of a difference? 
No, I heard no difference. So it's kind of those, you know, one of those things that makes you feel better. But as soon as you're outputting Dolby Digital, it will kick down to Dolby Digital and you know that its output is there and it's Dolby Digital. Now, audio delay. So many people complain about audio delay. Now, this is a fully wireless system, so you would think there would be a lot of audio delay. Actually, no, none, as long as you turn this to zero. But so you guys know, this is up there quite a bit stock. You have to go in and turn it to zero. Turn it to zero, and that will get rid of your audio delay. Once that is done, everything is complete on the TV. It's literally that simple. Now, if we turn this up, you can kind of hear on 360 and I'll try to give you the best sound that you could hear. To kind of give Let's you a few that. examples, I will do whatever I can to let you hear um, without my video getting pulled down for copyright. Sorry, it's so strict nowadays with YouTube, but let me go ahead and crank this up and just hear how amazing, amazing this is. Here we go. This might be hard to believe, seeing as how I'm a model of stoicism and courage today, but when I was a kid, I, I was... Woo! I tell you, oh my gosh. Anyone that hate, hates on bows, I don't know why. Whatever they do is absolutely mind-boggling. Again, the 700 or the SoundTouch 300, Dolby Atmos or not, if you don't buy this system, you're missing out. And by the way, I do not work for Bose. They do not pay me to say this. This is breathtaking. I don't know how they get this out of a sound bar. I really don't. So, there's that. And by the way, the Samsung 2018 Q9 TV... Oh my God, it's so amazing. If you have not yet got one, you need to check this TV out. Insanity. Last thing really quickly on your QLED or Samsung TV, um, a setting before I let you hear a movie. Basically hit the menu button. As you can see here, you can see Universal Remote. If you have any issues, you, what you want to do is you want to go to Universal Remote. Now, Go to new device. Okay, so here you see home theater system. Go ahead and hit home theater system. Now go ahead and select Bose. So the arc is controlled on HDMI 4. So go ahead and go to HDMI 4. Now what you want to do is do the power test and you want to click power test in next until it basically picks up your sound bar. Do this if it is not controlling your sound bar right, you know, picks it up right away um, on its own or it's not turning it up or down or anything that, you know, is not working as far as if you're switching different HDMI ports, you're not getting your HDMI arc support to work. Use this function and it will fix it. So you would just do this and then as soon as it picks it up, it will power it off, go ahead and power it back on and you're finished. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to block the screen, but I found a scene that I think will really show off the sound in a movie. This will be the last little test we do. I wanna also mention that the music sounds so great. I wish that there was a good song I can show you that wouldn't get my video pulled down, but you're just gonna have to hear that one. video was so long, hopefully it covered everything. Let's hear a little piece of a movie. I gotta block the screen, but 
at least you'll be able to hear a little bit more. Let's do it. Right off the edge. Break, break, break. <laughs> I gotta tell you, wow! Go out and buy yourself a SoundTouch 300 or a 700. Don't listen to anyone. You gotta hear this. It's unbelievable. That sums up the Bose 700. As always, I wanna stop right here to take a moment to remind everybody, life is so short. I know that there's so many people out there that are struggling in so many different ways. Don't forget that you are loved and you are important. Everyone's job on this planet is to make a difference. Every day I turn on the news or I turn on the TV, another tragedy has happened, another hateful thing has happened, and we are the only people that can change it. Whether you're going through a sickness or a heartache or a hardship, do not forget that you are so important and you are loved. And I just want to remind you that no matter what you're going through, if you push through it, you will come out on top. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. It's an honor that you're here. Don't forget to love your family, love your neighbor, go out and take care of someone today. Go out and do a small gesture that will change someone's day. Don't forget to utilize every moment you have with your loved ones to tell them that you love them and to spend time with them. As far as technology goes, I'm here for you guys. If you need me in any way, or if you just need someone to talk to and I can do so, I'm here. I do this to make a difference. As you know, if you've been following me, my health is very poor. But I know that it takes helping one another to get through these times. If you need me, reach me in the comments section. Or you could find me on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook at JB Tech Fanatic. Just talk to me in the comments. It could be about technology. It could be about anything. If I can help you, I will help you as best as I can. I want to thank you so much for being here. I'm thankful that you have considered subscribing and that you took the time to watch this video. I hope it really helped you. And I hope that you guys really take these words to heart and you go out and you live life to the fullest. I'm JB Tech Fanatic. I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Talk to you in the comments, and until then, you guys take care, and I'll talk to you later.